Hey, uh, my name is Sven. Um, I'm working as a global product manager within the NSP team. So in for Nokia services platform, I'm responsible for network automation tools as well as APIs and DevOps. So today we want to have a focus here on the automation tools. So what happened within, let's say, the last couple of months and also uh, we will have a look on what will happen uh, until the end of next year in that area of the product. So let's start first with network automation as it is supported by NSP. The ask hasn't changed while networks are growing. It's all about cost, time to deliver, and quality. Simplicity, scalability, and performance are key factors here, while the importance rises in the days of the global pandemic. The ask are not really contradicting each other and are related to each other. I'm just giving you two examples for that. So first of all, simplicity leads to higher quality and lower cost. Another example would be ITF compliancy enables faster integration, utilizing model-driven principles, leading to a consistent developer experience across all the API endpoints. When it comes to network automation and NSP, you actually have two options. So option number one is positioned for DevOps customers using NSP as a DIY automation environment. It contains of uh, a few feature packs. So we have pluggable network adaptation, which provides you with release, product family, and vendor independency. Intent-based networking um, is positioned to enforce network configuration in a declarative way, while NSP becomes your source of truth. And workflow automation is a natural way of doing step-by-step task-based automation, while it is based itself on imperative principles. The other option is to go for ready-to-go turnkey solutions. Those are part of the product, so and they also have product-attached customization services. Nokia Professional Services provides you with trainings, customization of built-in use cases, and designed tailored integration solutions. Both options somehow belong to each other and complement each other. So we have the automation engines, um, and those are used as well to build some of the uh, ready-to-go use cases. However, you can now customize those use cases to your own needs. Now let's have a look into the NSP architecture and the ingredients of NSP. So first we have the inventory, um, which basically allows you to control what objects you want to change through your automation. Also it's required to make right decisions. Then there is the pluggable mediation framework. So that is to talk to the network, your nodes, controllers, using any protocol and any model. It's also taking care about the authentication credentials and session handling. If required, it supports you with translation of data models as well. Together with pluggable mediation, NSP apps deliver the basic ingredients to build advanced automation solutions. About the NSP platform, there is some evolution going on. First of all, we are moving more and more to cloud-native uh, containerized microservices architecture using Kubernetes. NSPOS is part of every NSP installation, providing platform-wide services such as authentication handling, logging, and database storage. The deployment framework supports you with the differentiation between synchronous and asynchronous deployments. Also, it has retry principles, and to provide better scale and performance, it has the potential to groom multiple requests to a single request southbound. The recent framework allows you to keep copies of the actual network information inside NSP to enable fast database log access. Also, we have the REST to REST conf evolution. So that allows to use Yang as a modeling language to provide you with consistent APIs. And last but not least, we have a file storage server with transfer to the network element. So as part of the automation framework and tools, we are primarily looking into the following things. So there's the workflow manager that was introduced in NSP 19.6. Um, that has the ability, as said before, that we have task-based automation. 
The Intent Manager was introduced in 20.6, providing you with intent-based networking. The Resource Administrator was added in March this year, and it allows you to allocate unique resources for network configuration, such as services. The LSO Framework, or let's say large-scale operation framework, was as well introduced in the 20.3 release. It enables to execute workflows at scale and comes with use cases like backup restore and software upgrade. The event admin is something we are planning for the end of this year as part of 21.11. It has pluggable triggers to execute workflows automatically in a closed loop manner. There has been a set of changes from 26 to 21.6, um, and now we want to have a look into it. So we basically apply continuous investments into the automation frameworks um, to drive usability, programmability, and applicability. Just to give you two examples, so we introduce the resource administrator um, that allows you to control the allocation of network addresses and identifiers, avoiding to have hard requirements on external ID service or IPAM solutions. Also, we introduce the principle of synchronous workflows, synchronous workflow executions to allow much simpler integration into your OSS. While the async method is preferred uh, to enable better scale and performance and avoid session timeouts, the synchronous method is a good addition to have. So now let's have a look into the scalability of uh, the workflow manager. So actually, we improved dramatically the number of uh, workflow execution results that can be stored within NSP. So that is like 10 times better than it actually was before. So scale and performance in principle is key factor for automation. Um, limits apply to the engine, right, as you can see here on that screen, but also for the end-to-end -end use case. For the time being, we are keeping the concurrency at 64 parallel executions. Higher concurrency can be achieved, but requires further testing. However, you always need to make sure to not overload the underlying apps. Also, let's have a look at the user interface. So user input was introduced a while back. Um, the main use cases are approvals, like your manager can approve um, if you are creating services or starting a migration. We have things like warnings or confirmation prompts. And also it's possible to provide extra info. So that could be taken as far as to have like guided dialogue forms. Focus really here was usability and enforcement. So the improvements in that area have been taken primarily to improve the um, user experience over here, but also to be more enforceful to provide restrictions as required. Another enhancement we have taken in Workflow Manager is to support Python actions. Um, this basically allows you to add Python code into your YAML of the workflow to provide advanced logic, right? Here we are taking into consideration the popularity of Python in the network automation community. Also, we provide full access to the Python libraries that we are shipping with a product, which allows you to highly extend um, the future use cases you want to build. For example, it's possible to render results or reports using open source libraries. So um, there was some rethink required in Workflow Manager as we shifted to Kubernetes. So the question really was, what is the Python libraries and what are the shell commands that we are shipping together with a product, right? To really allow you to build um, uh, the solution use cases that you actually want. So um, in that sense, the Python libraries can be used together with the Python action that we just talked about, but also it's possible to use them together with the actions and expression functions that you want to build. Um, the shell commands can be used with, NS with the NSP shell uh, command. Just to give you an example, we're shipping OpenSSL together with a product, and that enables use cases around certificate management, like building TLS certificates, IPsec or MacSec certificates. And then there's also NMAP, which allows you to build use cases like network security audits. Um, a wider area of thing is LSO. So that really was built as um, framework 
to support operations at scale. It's not really something really new here. Um, in theory, you could do all what you can do with LSO as well, with the workflow manager itself. But the question really was, what happens if I want to execute the same thing against multiple nodes? And that could be thousands or even 10,000 of nodes. The problem is if you wrap all of that into a single workflow, what actually happens is that um, you sort of fall back in the visibility what was successful or what was unsuccessful. So just to improve the operational experience, we said we want to have the control against what objects you are executing your workflows into a dedicated framework. So it provides you much better insight on what was good or what was bad. So as part of the current scope of LSO, we are so supporting a couple of use cases. So there's things like any backups and restore, or also software upgrades. And those are shipped together with the product if you are going for the corresponding operational suites. Um, in principle, there's no dedicated web UI for that. So if you open the NSP user interface, you wouldn't really see um, a button which says LSO. So what you actually need to do is to open the device administrator, and there you find the different operation types that we are supporting. Um, what really the value add of the new framework is, is that um, it's a generic pluggable programmable framework, really. So, and it supports as well multi-vendor nodes and future releases. So what we are supporting here is you could, for example, do a software upgrade as it was meant before, but as we are using now the workflow manager and you have a custom method of procedure, you can actually adopt the procedure to your needs, right? So also you could think of future use cases. So things where we have prototypes for could be simple things like just checking the reachability of your network devices, to do things like a persistency of your configuration, like triggering an admin safe on your devices, or as well, certificate management. So now we want to have a look into the roadmap of NSP. So what will happen in automation frameworks within the next, let's say, releases, so 2111, but also 2022. So technically, we are picking all the different areas. So we have the workflow manager, intent manager, large-scale operations, which all come with their own feature sets. But there's also some common features which apply to all of the different bits and pieces. So one thing to highlight is that we are doing LSO phased operations. And the thing is the following. Think of you want to do a software upgrade. So the interesting thing about software upgrades actually is that most of the operators don't do that in a single go. So it's not like you're clicking on a button and you want to upgrade an entire network element at one time. Typically, this is phased over multiple days. So like you want to go there a day, a week before, just to do some pre-checks, right? Is there any card failures? Do all my cards that I have in that chassis, do they support the upgrade, right? And then there could be things like the file transfer you do, right? And there's no necessity that the file transfer actually need to happen within the maintenance window. Whatsoever, if you do something that is service affecting, and that would be true about the activation or the post checks you are doing, you need to be a little bit careful, right? Because that typically happens at nighttime, right, in your maintenance window. Whatsoever, like if there's a cleanup required, that can be done much later, right, and even daytime again. Really, the idea here is that you want to reduce as much as you can the risk of your operation, right? So meaning if you do the pre-check a week before, actually the chance that within the maintenance window all your upgrades are running well is quite good, but also you basically can do more upgrades within your maintenance window. Um, looking a little bit into the details of two other features we are working on. So there is, first of all, the execution control. That is one of the things we are looking at from Workflow Manager, primarily. So the idea here is the following. Um, if you see that you can execute workflows from your OSSs or potentially using triggers, there is a sort of risk, right? So let's say you have a big convergence in your network that might trigger tons and tons of workflows. As of today, the system is built in a way that we are queuing all the requests we are getting in, right? So technically what would happen is all your workflows get executed in a big queue. You can do 64 at a time. 
So the problem is if you have maybe a million things in the queue, it could happen that if you add a new task to it, it takes potentially hours to get executed. And that might be something you don't want because like if a user is sitting in front of a user interface, the expectation actually is that if you execute a workflow, you see the results straight away. So what we want to do here is to do some fairness between different use cases and different users, right? So how do we do that? Um, we basically look into, or we looked into what is possible with our networking equipment, right? And you may know that we have things like queuing, scheduling, throttling, and things like that, right? So the idea really is that we are creating multiple lanes for that, right? So you could, for example, say, oh, there's a mass operation, I do LSO, to, for example, do massive software upgrades at a given moment of time. But if at the same moment of time an operator needs to do troubleshooting in the network, right, things like that go into a different queue and we can basically realize some fairness between the different queues. So that is one of the things we are working on. Another bigger area where we are working on is triggers, or what we call the event administrator. The idea here is the following. So we introduced Kafka Trigger a while back, but Kafka Trigger, of course, is limited to NSP events itself. So think of it, you have a threshold crossing alert because you have defined your thresholds in the KPI framework, and now you could trigger a workflow automatically. Whatsoever, it's not always the case that those events come from the inside of NSP. So there could be triggers coming from external systems as well. Think of it in the easiest case that you are a customer which is using Kafka also for other systems and now you want to automatically trigger the execution of a workflow, right? In here we are looking into different ways of triggering your workflows, right? So it could be that you do a certain rest call on a yeah, periodic base, let's say every five minutes, and if the result shows something specific, you are automatically triggering a workflow. Also, that you might connect to other messaging buses, that you introduce kind of callbacks, UDP messages like syslog, or you also could check for DB changes, right? All what it allows you to do is really to integrate with your existing OSS or your new OSS, other Nokia products, or existing web services. Okay, so, if that was good enough for you to basically get interested, so you might wonder on how to get started with it, right? So, and there's a couple of pointers I can give to you, right? One is actually that you could check what was provided by Nokia EDU, right? And Nokia EDU was working together with Ion Learning Services to provide trainings on the different bits and pieces that we have. So there's a training um, available for the workflow manager and there's a training available as well for the intent engine. And we are continuously updating this material, so I think that is definitely a good starting point to go for. The other good resource is um, you can check out the dev portal. So what we have on the dev portal is we have Cloud Labs available. Um, on the Cloud Labs, there's actually two ways you could go for it. So there is uh, free labs available as long as you are a registered user. Um, those are shared labs, so you only can get a slot of something like two hours at a time, but it's for free. But also we have ways to where you can ask for a dedicated lab, um, which would be a paid service for you. Um, other than that, also on the dev portal, we have a lot of information on how to build your own automation using workflows, using intents, using our APIs, right? So I provided you with the links for that, and I hope I see you on the dev portal. Um, that's all from my side. Uh, thanks for your attention and uh, see you hopefully next time live at S Experts 2022. Bye.